Number 33. Describe the properties of an electron associated with each of the following four quantum numbers, which are N, L, M, L, N, M, S. Okay, so the last question, number 32, we described how to find the actual numbers for these four quantum numbers. So if you want to know how to find the numbers to them, go back to number 32. This one, we won't talk about how to find the numbers. We'll just talk about what these four quantum numbers actually mean. So we start from the largest and go to the smallest. So the largest would be the n value, and you work your way down to l, ml, and then finally ms. So we'll start with the largest, so we'll talk about n. And we should know that n is the principal quantum number. I'll just say principal qn, right? It's the principal quantum number, and it will tell you the overall shell number. Now, the shell number will tell you two things. It will tell you the general amount of how much energy is in that shell, and it will also tell you the probability of where an electron is in that specific orbital. So, for example, if this is the nucleus, right? And I'll shade this, I guess, in yellow. So if this was the nucleus, and then we have our general uh, n values, right, which are the shells. So I'll draw in green here. This would be n equals 1. Then around it, the general area would be n equals 2. And then vice versa, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because the electrons are always outside of the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. And the green would be represented as n equals 1, and the blue would be n equals 2. And just know that as you go farther and farther and farther away from the nucleus, those shells, you have increasing amount of energy. So as you go farther and farther away, the energy that you, that, you know, the electron has is much greater than the ones that are super, super close to the nucleus, making it more unstable. Okay, so that t takes care of n. So all that n will tell you is basically how far away you are from the nucleus. And if you're more farther away, you'll have more energy. And it'll also be able to tell you the probability of a, a electron. So if it's n equals 2, the electron will be anywhere. The probability of an electron would be in the blue section. If an electron was in n equals 1, it would be in the green section. Okay, now let's get into the L's. The L's is called angular momentum, or the azimuthal quantum number, or the secondary quantum number. I like to just call it angular momentum. And what the L number represents is it will tell you the subshell. So we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's telling you the actual shape of the orbital. So... For n equals 1 or n equals 2, right, or n equals 3, et cetera, et cetera, you will have different shapes because you'll have different subshells. So, for example, for any L that is equal to 0, this is classified always as an S subshell. And an S subshell always has a circular shape. So that means that if this was the nucleus, the S subshell would be like a, basically a circle around the nucleus. This would be the nucleus. However, if you had an L that was equal to 1, then these would be classified as the P subshell. And if this was the nucleus, the P's actually look different from the S's. The P's have basically two parts to them. They would have kind of like, they look like dumbbells. So one would go above, and the other one would go below. Now, it's not all the time that it's above and below. It would, could be to the side, but the, the thing about this is that you have probability of an electron being found here or here. You see how it's just a different shape than the S subshell because they have different names. So different names, S subshell versus P subshell, they just have to look different. So that's what it means by the L will just tell you the shape. The S subshell would be circular. The P subshell would have basically two components. Yeah? Okay. And then there's different shapes for L equals 2, L equals 3. You get the picture, though. Now let's move on to ML. 
ML is the magnetic quantum number. So I'm just going to put MQN. Now this one branches off on the L value. So it has the little L here, so it has to be talking about L. It's going to tell you the orientation of the orbital. Well, what does that mean? So, um, we will say that for every s, s subshell, which is these circles right here, right? So for every s subshell, there's only one orbital. So technically, there would be only one ml value for an s subshell. It would be the nucleus with that circular um, electron density outside of the nucleus. But now, if we take the same idea and we talk about the p subshell, the magnetic quantum number, the ml, would tell us that there's three orbitals. And with each orbital there would be a different orientation. So there would be three numbers for the ML in the P subshell, and I'll show you what they look like. So if I just draw three uh, nuclei, right, and I'll do my colors here, one would be exactly like above. So one would have electron density on the top, electron density on the bottom. The next one would be to the sides, so electron density to the side, and the other one would be to the side. You see how they're kind of looking like dumbbells? And then the other one has like 3D um, component to it, so it's actually sticking in the front and then going in the back. So all of these would represent the P subshell, just three different orientations. Because if we have a graph, right? This is like the 3D, do you see that? So it follows kind of like the coordinates of a graph. If I draw that. So that's what the ML will tell you. The ML will tell you, okay, we have this specific shape because that's what the L was, but now which one is it? Is it the one that's going up and down? Is it the one that's going left to right? Or is it the one that goes front to back? And then last but not least, we have the spin quantum number, which is the MS. So I'll just say spin quantum number. And, you know, those, those are right here. So you guys can just go back to the table and see that. The spin quantum number specifically talks about how the electron is spinning. There's only two directions in which an electron can spin. It could spin upward or it could spin downward. If an electron is spinning upward, it will always have the number of plus one half. If it's spinning downward, it would have the number of negative one half. But that's all that this is specifically saying. So once you get down to the nitty nitty gritty, you exactly locate that electron and you just see where is it spinning. Is it spinning upward or is it spinning downward? That's all that the MS will tell you. So it's specifically the spinning of the electron, the direction, whether it's upward or downward. Yeah? Okie dokie. That's all. That's all for this one, guys. Hopefully this helped. Once again, if you do need to go over the numbers, go back to the next question. But I took a look ahead, and there's tons of questions with the four quantum numbers, so more practice, the better for you guys. I will be there every step of the way for you. I'll see you guys all in number 34. Bye-bye.